yeah, I mean, what's the point? What's the point anymore of <clears throat> subliminally accusing people of doing something or even outright just say the name of the person. I think at this point there's no changing it. There's no there's no stopping the evil that comes in my direction until until it's over. And but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to hold my tongue with someone's actions that has pride in the in the in the words and the topic regardless of how a certain species either fades off in a natural way or in a unnatural way. What is natural anyway? And who is to say when God decides to take somebody, he takes them. But does he really, does he take them or is it that Satan takes them? Or Satan takes his life and then God revives his life in a different realm of existence. Do we all start here? And once we're done, I mean, I'll always still have theories like what happens. I'll always still try to figure out who's who and what your script is. And similar to Satan, once you die, maybe his little trick is that he convinces you within the next three days that there is no heaven and you're either going to burn in hell or if you agree, act now, don't waste any time. You know, when you're like buying a car, they hurry up and just buy it today. If you don't buy it today, you act now and you cons considering you don't know that there's a a three-day waiting period then you'll rush to get the hell out of the, the bottomless pit where you meet your creator at of the flesh and it's so convincing that you're gonna get burned up in this lake of fire that he's showing you unless unless here's here's what we'll do all right Here, take this earpiece, become my other ear and my other eye. Here, give me your eyeball, pluck that out. I need your right one. That way you don't do anything right. So I'll take your right eye and put this in your ear. Do as I say. I will fulfill all your fleshly desires on earth. Doesn't matter if you're a bum on the street rich as hell no matter what you are I will take care of your fleshly desires and um, if not you're going to burn in hell look you see that pit we're going to toss you in there or maybe you'll even see other people in there getting tossed in there but they're really just I don't know, like robots acting like they're burning up and you know screaming and stuff That would be one way, I mean, for Satan to trick you into believing that everybody that dies, once you die, you finally get out of the flesh. There is no more sin. You, you can't sin. You go up to heaven, the real one, like the real heaven. You go there, and there's no more sin. 
but you took the bait. You didn't wait three days, and you got too scared, so you agreed. And I mean, who knows? You could possibly have come back as a female. And then you repeat in your in your bones, so you get reskinned with your original bones. But if you just wait three days, because you're already in a matrix type of a plug-in dreamland as it is, so if you just waited, you get plugged in to your heavenly body that's perfection and and uh, and then you go to heaven yep so I would say just wait it out if whoever dies from here on out just wait it out and see what see what happens there with you know if you meet Satan you would be pretty damn you would remember me like oh my god how Robin how did you know I didn't I was just guessing I was just thinking out loud Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. So what? Either way. I like to look at all angles from everywhere. And then let's talk about what was the topic. One of them was Absalom or uh, be, like being a so David sent his, or Absalom slept with his concub, his David's concubines, out in the open. Or say, say Mary and Christ. Maybe let's say that, let's say that Mary was somebody else's husband, I mean a wife. Again, these are all just hypotheses. What if Mary Magdalene was somebody else's wife and she was sent in Jesus' direction and then considering there's no real concrete evidence that Christ ever had a relationship or any children and then understanding how things are kept out and you have to read between the lines because then you'll misinterpret scripture and think that perfection is something different. The sin that Christ didn't have was the concealment of the tree of life. That was the sin that he wasn't part of the beast system. He wasn't part of the beast system. He wasn't riding any beast. Now he comes back riding on a, a, a white, which is pure, horse. And a horse represents how you get around. You got, let's say if you get, pick up a, I don't know, like a, I don't know, like a top off my head, like a, like a Silverado or something. Let's say you pick up a white Silverado, you'll have a bunch of horse power, regardless of what kind of motor you get. So if you get like a 5.7 liter, you might have at least 300 and could be 50 horsepower. I had to Google it. I, I don't really know. But um, he also comes on the clouds because the clouds also white, pure in the air, up in the air, in the airwaves. Lucifer is the principality of the airwaves. So that's why Christ would come through the internet on you know, the clouds with, with, uh, with judgment. And then, but when you're trying to tie it into the Old Testament, like a, like a Joseph type figure, Um, he would be well he'd be persecuted but not killed 
not killed, like even like Job. Job was righteous, like the only one righteous, so how doesn't he represent Christ? Just a different type of a story. This in this story of Jesus Christ, he was married and had a bunch of um, subscribers. Like at least twenty thousand and then certain certain people were separated. He had like don't quote me on it, like twenty thousand sheep or something like along those lines, and then however many she asses and donkeys and and a bunch of those donkeys. It's like the the old testament talks about the same similar similarities of what Christ went through in the New Testament but the interpretation is a literal crucifixion of an actual murder just out in the public you know where there was a cross there had to be a cross and they lifted him up and nailed him to it and then the same thing with the two thieves, one on each end. So, if if Christ was to get crucified, then, like modern day, then I'm sure he would expect to see the two thieves to get also murdered on the cross right next to him. But with Job's story, Job was lied to about everything. He was, there were messengers, angel mess, messengers. Three of them at first, and then the fourth one last. He said he was the younger one. He came up last. He he thought he had uh, all the answers, I guess. I mean, but then God started talking about, what did he say, Goliath? Is that what he was talking about? The creation of Goliath or Goliath or Behemoth? growth? Is that what he said? The creation of basically Satan, really. I think that's what he was mentioning. The purpose of, of him. The purpose of Satan is to be stuck between a rock and a hard place. Satan is the hard place. Christ is the rock. And you get stuck between the both of them. Naturally, you're going to stick, you're going to pick the hard place more than the rock because what you're going to do is you stumble over that stumbling stone. And you wind up falling into the hard place. So, with Job's scenario, he was persecuted by these messengers of his, these so called friends. He said they were miserable comforters miserable because they were lying to him I don't know it didn't really say what they were lying about again you got to read between the lines on these stories but uh, he said that they or liars I forget the exact term and he uttered things that he didn't know and if he did know it he would know not to utter it and I think what happened is this. I think that the angels, right? I think they were, maybe they were a little bit too hard on Job because I guess because he represents the Christ figure, righteous, right? Because he represents that and then you know how people say that Christ is God and so therefore it's like, well, you're God. You should know already. <laughs> and then... But really what happens is Christ isn't all-knowing until he knows all things. His friends were Bible scholars from birth. And Christ was the Word of God which manifested the words that... You see, his life... His life manifested the word you gotta love that smoke just being blown in your face I guess I'll slow down here 
crazy. Walked the earth and he manifested the words that were written about him that he didn't even know. That's how you knew that he was the Christ. But interpretation says that Christ even let his hair down. Job said God took his crown from his head and a crown on top of your head is a is like an icing on the cake. It's like the cat it's like the the topping of the you know when you have hair you can swish it around and make it look all cool and neat and then that's your crown on top of your head. Job said I don't know if he was bald or not but Elisha apparently they called him bald head go up. I heard one interpretation from somebody that might have been acting like Elisha, which was when uh, Tyler Mullen was talking about succeeding Elijah, and with with Stephen James also representing that role of Elijah, coming after Ahab and Jezebel, um, it, it gets passed down another notch. I feel like three and a half years later, between three to four years later, it's like next situation, you become another character as the other one, as you step up or somebody else steps down the ladder, you step up one or the other. It always seems like somebody's trying to take somebody else's place until that person shows up and then they need to uh, fall back, you know, laughing. So I heard Tyler Mole is saying something about he was, it's not that he was bald headed like Jonathan Click or me, it's that he thinks that he would, they could have, he could have shaved his head that, that for that moment, I guess in a, kind of like a paying homage, homage to Elijah, his, his predecessor, his, uh, I don't know, like the one you look up to. But always it seems like Elisha and Elijah intertwine with each other because Elisha gets a double portion of Elijah. So he's like, he's like Elijah also, he's like, he's just like Elijah, but also with the spirit and power that he has. So he becomes a double portion of knowledge. seems like it reminds me of the Christ again with Elijah. Elisha, the second portion. And then even Christ himself could have been announcing Christ is coming. Like, even in 2011, Harold Camping saying, Judgment's coming, Christ is returning in spirit, and then announcing that Christ is coming. But you're coming in as like a John the Baptist type in your own spirit, announcing Christ. And then I wonder if Christ was kind of like in the beginning. Was he not in that, Was he not saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? So he was basically announcing himself coming into the world too. And then he be, and then he becomes the Christ. But at the same time, there is a John the John the Baptist that announces the arrival and makes the path straight. So everything just seems to intertwine like that. And when Job is saying that he lost his crown, God took his crown, he's being judged by these liars. And he was more right, again, in the end, it's not like Job was completely innocent of you know, running his mouth, but look what he went through. He knew he was being unrightfully accused of. He's a sinner, and that's why he needs to he needs to repent from the like what they were saying wasn't right. And I, and I, yeah, I guess that's how he knew that they were liars, because he came in hating evil so so disgusting, sickening, sickeningly. 
that and then fighting against it and you need to repent from what? For for fighting against for resisting evil? But being upset at God in a sense, but not cursing God because you know you know what's going on. You know that Satan sending his minions your way judging you saying you're the you you're the sin it's like it reminds me of like uh that wise guy over there i haven't watched a video of his in a while i, I seen a title i'm not even going to go and and look through it it seems like another it's just a i just want to make sure that whoever jezebel and ahab is in this system that um i'm not going to just let you chirp off without sending a a true righteous judgment in your direction. Because if I'm right, alright, well then I'm right, then I guess you must be Jezebel. And that makes me and if I'm wrong, well, God told me to be hot or cold. Did he tell me to apologize for being hot or cold, hit or miss? That's how I get my answers. I've learned over the years that I get answers by just, it's either this or that. I, I don't know, I don't know why I need to know the answer so much. Am, am I being judged because I want truthful answers? Am I being judged because evil sickens me to death? And even the acting, you could be acting like you're responsible for being some real evil villain, but you're actually not, because you're really telling me what the, what the true evil villain is doing, who's kind to my face. You know, it's different. It's like, people that can be kind to you are the biggest backstabbers, and the ones that are rebuking you to your face are the ones that truly love you and care about you. And um, they're, they're not, it's not the time yet to reveal who you are because people need to be held accountable and go full force to make sure they are fully possessed by the devil in order for them to get, to turn back to God. And that's the devil's job, whether I like it or not, and I don't like it a lot. So, but it's necessary, and I'm sure will be nice when it's over. So about the concubines and sleeping with wives and stuff like that, I see it as there's a literal Saul, a literal King David. There's a literal. Christ and all of these literals are planned ahead of time because the scriptures were written about them so the characters that it was written about they're playing it out right now through the YouTube platform and throughout the world and then there's a spirit there's a spiritual Christ there's a spiritual King David there's a spiritual everything's in spirit and there may even be two different cabals that are playing out that same. One of them gets three and a half years at first. It may be the house of Judah, I, I don't know. And then, because they did come in first and the house of Israel comes in last. The Jews get, they finally come back. Because Christ went to them first, they got, he got rejected. Then he went to the Gentiles and then the Philistines and then uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Oh wait, that was great. Uh, yeah same spirit and then back to the Jews and then to the house of Israel and then you always have somebody being in the place of acting as if they are and then so it in the end Christ goes back to his original roots because 
it's like the first three and a half years and then the next three and a half years. I remember when I started YouTube April 2nd and then three and a half years later, three and a half years plus 19 days later, the water stood still. The, the water's dried up and it's like the rain stopped for that moment representing for the next three and a half years there will be no more rain there's no rain you're only you're only going to get liars because they're all the ravens are going to feed they'll feed elijah it's not normal because ravens are meat like man uh, like uh, meat eaters and they don't share their meat order bread and and they wind up giving Elijah some sandwiches <laughs> well God can even use the unclean birds to feed his prophets and that's what he does I've gotten fed by some uh, some people on the YouTube platform that may not be on the full up and up telling the absolute 100% truth even if they say that they'll be telling the truth because the truth is if you're sharing a channel and you're putting on a mask and you're not telling anybody that my twin is coming up next well you're being deceptive you're not fully 100% telling the truth look it's L it's LT's LTs, LTs. I was looking at that at LTs. And I figured I would get a. Uh, this is a R. I mean, this is a. What is it? RST? RT? I forget what it is. It has the center console shift. This. This is what I like about it. It has the shifter and then the screen. So that's the difference. But when it comes to the, the concubines or the... I feel like Christ was being set up. I feel like they tried to have him commit adultery. I feel like he may have been in a relationship with Mary Magdalene, as I've already concluded my belief system, because it only makes sense the way the Bible is written and how things aren't spoken about, but they're implied. And I've learned that implication type serpent language, which means the Bible was written by the serpent himself. He placed himself upon high and called himself God. It's a language. God knows the language. So let's say... It's like, all right, so uncovering your father's nakedness. Um, let's say, Ham, what was it, Ham? Yeah, Ham uncovered his father's nakedness. So what does that mean? Well, it could mean that you're sleeping with your father's wife. And then just like, just like Absalom sleeping with his father's concubines, King David... And then you have Noah and his son, Ham, sleeping with his... Or, uh, does that mean he slept with his mother? Well, yeah, I mean, isn't that how they populated the earth? Right? I mean, how else did they repopulate the earth? If there was only eight people left... I don't know, they had their own wives. But then again, they could have had their own wives within them, male and female... Parthenogenesis, they could have created their own babies. But first they had to have have uh, Jonah, uh, not Jonah, Noah and his wife. And they had the kids. 
that just seems like it represents Adam and Eve and Abraham and Sarah and just so on and so forth, the same spirits, different names. And so if he uncovered his father's nakedness, it's either one, he slept with his mom, he slept with his father's wife, which uncovers his nakedness. Uh, or two, wait, what is the other one? Two, one would be, <clears throat> it didn't say he slept with his mom. It just said they didn't know what the sin was. They, didn't, they weren't clear about it. But he could have been a gang stalking leader. And I mean, every time his father gets into the shower, maybe they, or whatever, they just watch him. and Or even they just sneakily watch him behind the scenes. And when you're watching somebody behind the scenes 24 seven, you're also uncovering their nakedness. But to also uncover the nakedness, to uncover but with that being a sin, it wouldn't be something that was being revealed. That was, like, it's not like Ham was doing something to reveal his father's sin. He's the one that uncovered his nakedness. He, it was like laying him bare. And then you could be, I was accused of being Ham. All right, so this is what I'm trying to say. Noah, it's like, I was accused of being the son of Noah, apparently, from Stephen James Shawnee. I remember he accused me of it. He says, dumbass, we accusing people of stupid shit. Well, you're saying I'm freaking ham bone. So, is that not an accusation? Or do you have absolute proof that that's who I am? So, what does that make you, Noah? Am I dad? Dad? Is that you? Dad? And then it's like, well, you're sleeping with my wife, Robin. Oh, yeah? Well, I didn't know that she was part of the Gangstalk Corporation when you sent her my direction. How am I supposed to know that? I'm not God. And then that would be like, because everything's like a similitude. That would be like Christ being accused of committing adultery, being married to Mary, when... How was he supposed to know that she was part of the Gangstock Corporation from the beginning when he married her? Huh? Well, he's God. He's supposed to know that. And then there's those angels that are liars and they it's like the Job thing. They're judging him, calling him a sinner, and he needs to turn back to God. And that's why he's being judged, because he's a sinner, but yet he's the most righteous man on the planet hypocrites I really didn't know anything about the Bible just basic stories right before I started YouTube I sent those letters I really studied the I studied the portions of when I wrote those letters to my neighbors because I was concerned about their well-being I didn't realize they were all controlled by the Gangstalk Corporation either. Is that an accusation? Well, is it true? Well, then it's not an accusation. But how do you know it's true? Well, my heart tells me it is. My mind can discern. Can I not discern evil intent? Well, then when I'm being accused of someone that needs to repent, of that am I not right even though I don't have evidence Stephen James can you tell me am I not correct of course I am but I am the accuser of the brethren because I don't have evidence of it but it's true it's true Gangstalk Corporation your worst enemies will be in your own household. Well, that's why Christ said, guess what he said about your enemies? 
He said, love them. Love your enemies. Show love to your enemies. He's also referring to show love to the people in your own household. Because they're your greatest enemies. Because, okay. <laughs> the greatest enemies are that of your own family members in your own household. Because Satan's job is to turn them against you. So I can only imagine if Christ had kids and a wife. I would, I would just be willing to bet that they turned against him at some point. He represents King David also, like the, because he's the seed of David. Here's what I'm getting at. In real life, Christ could be the actual seed of David himself. He slept with uh, Bathsheba, right? Bathsheba could also be his own male-female system, and then Bathsheba produced the baby man-child Christ. Parthenogenesis would be one way I was thinking of it was if David was if he slept with Bathsheba but it was really the transformation and he, he had his own baby well and then that baby was the seed of David the greater son of David the son of man the son of a man his mother his his creator is his mother but his mother is also his father so one way of seeing it is uh, being a son of man the reptilians the parthenogenesis system is a reptilian in real life a lizard type cr a creature gets its own self pregnant and has its own offspring without an actual man so that's what happens and then that would be the one way of looking at it if you want to look at it as a literal son of man then there you go Christ would be the son of man, of a man. His his parents is really are really two fathers. He really has two dads. Because he would have Satan as his dad, because that would be the seed that was implanted into the into his actual father who carried him into the womb as a mother, father, creator. And then uh Sort of like the Truman Show. Christophilus follows him around his entire life. And then he finally figures out. Because he was a... Truman was a... Truman was a... Government baby. Who knows? Truman could have had a photo portrait like I do and it could have showed like his two real fathers behind him on his shoulder and then he has like his foster family or even it could also be the the mother was a you know like the reptilian race can create its own offspring but it's the seed so but I mean the, the similarity that I have with the Truman Show is that he recognized the gang stalking also. And at some point, he finally empowered himself. But, you know, throughout that whole Truman Show, him representing Christ because he was the only one telling the truth, they didn't kill him. He tried to Christophilus himself, his own, I just, it must be his dad it seemed like or I don't know tried to swish him off into the ocean all angry at him so if if a certain person says the kid says his son is wicked, like David says his son Absalom is wicked, and he's sleeping with his concubines, or or, uh, or not even that, but Ham didn't really say what he did, 
uncovered his father's nakedness. That, oh yeah, that's right. The other interpretation could be that maybe Noah didn't tell his son, first of all, that it, he was his real son. Second of all, that the wife that he has is really Noah's, one of his wives that he sent to gang stalk his own son. And then he would, and it would, it would call him evil because, like, it really happened in the, in the actual interpretation. And then the, the lie would be, it has to all match up and be true all the way around in the Masonic way. Because the Masonic way is twisted. So it's like, well, you were sleeping with my wife. Yeah, but I didn't know that she was married beforehand because she never told me. Yeah, but you're God. You're supposed to know that. I mean, or, or uh, you're Jesus. You're supposed to know that. And then because you're supposed to know everything, which you're not really supposed to until you are you learn it and you're told everything and you live through it as the word of God that was already written about that you finally decided that you are the walking word of God, that's how Christ was crucified. It's because maybe they thought he was supposed to know everything. So they took it, they t took it hard on him. And... It's more like a jealousy thing, like trying to find something wrong with them. Like, well, you're not, you don't, you're not Christ. You're supposed to know everything. No, you're not. And that's what reminds me of Joe with his friends, his three friends. I wonder if that was Peter, John, and James also. And then the fourth one, maybe that was John who was, or that or uh, maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was Mary, his mother. His, maybe it was Mary Magdalene. And then the other Mary, or Martha. But in the, as the female. And in the male version, it always seems like Peter, John, and James are mentioned the most with the three. Because aren't they the first three they went fishing with for the second time? They already knew them, so... I just don't think that his... It says friends, you know, quote, friends, unquote. But if you do the will, he Christ said, if you do, it, you're my friend if you do what I tell you to do, all right? But well, look, Satan says the same thing. You can be his friend too, if you tell him what, if you do what he tells you to do. But Christ was doing it in a righteous way, meaning if you do what I tell you to do, share, stop being greedy, uh, stop lying, uh, open up the doors of your homes that you have many, many mansions and houses and hotels, Trump, and stop charging us for just free access. What do you need money for? To keep us as, as uh, slaves? because we have to work for something. Well, what if heaven's supposed to come down here on earth? The work is finished. Why do you need humans to, to, do, to do that work anymore when you have robots that are just very well capable of doing it even better than humans and they don't even complain because they, they don't run out of energy? To see it as being tricked Christ being tricked you know if he was married to Mary because he did kiss her on the lips and say yeah you greet each other with a holy kiss but on the lips it's a little different in real life and then in spirit world Mary Magdalene or I mean in the male female YouTube planet Mary Magdalene would be someone who obviously looks like a man. They're, you're going to have a face of a man regardless because your identity is hidden in Christ. It's hidden. And, but it would be somebody that truly did repent. Of course there's going to be somebody else who's acting like they repented, but they're really 
going to be kind to your face and backstab you. And it could be someone that's doing it now and not three and a half years ago. Because you could be acting like something as if we're just starting back then, but we're towards the end. And time's up for that, whoever that one is. Wouldn't that just be the Antichrist himself? And who's that? But I've had my theories. It's whoever is in place of Christ right now, at this exact moment, and would have to be somebody that has a, a fairly well-known YouTube channel because how else would you be known as the Antichrist unless you did? But then, what if the real Antichrist is someone that's like kind of hidden and only has a few subscribers? You don't really, it seems so, like, yeah, right, that's the Antichrist. <laughs> he doesn't even have, a, please. Well, that just means you're you're looking, you're searching, you, you're you're not leaving one stone left upon another, and you find the diamond in the rough because the diamond in the rough, finding the Antichrist himself, is like finding pure gold. And silver. Silver. Uh, raw. Um, Ra God Do. The Do is the is the silver and gold is Do. And isn't Ra the god of is he like the silver and gold Ra Do? <laughs> and the streets. Yeah, I'm probably gonna just I just wanted to I just wanna make sure you're not gonna get away with it. That's all, Jacob. That's it. That's just for that moment. Um, but again, I, I don't have to watch anybody. I don't even have to do anything. I already did it. I'm just waiting for time to go by. Everything that happens from here on out is just adding the, the lettering on the icing of the cake with the candle sticks already in it, lit. It's not like the evil's gonna stop coming in my direction, no matter what. But yeah, I could ease off one. You're, you're right, Stephen James, Sean. You're right. I, I could, I can repent from, you know, accusing people of things. So what good does it do? You already know. I know your heart, your mind, your thoughts. With if you're evil or you're acting evil, or if you really, you're really a good-hearted person, but you're just acting still, and you're being converted, and you're gonna. You know, you're going to trick people. Because that's your job. And, um... Even something like saying that my mom's next. Well... Who is my mother? And my brother? And my sisters? Who are they? Are they the ones that do the will of my father in heaven? Or are they blood mother, brother, sister, or foster mother, brother, sister. And then, so my, it's like my true mother and father, but it's like my true mother, you know, I have an unusual baby picture. Let's just say that. And there's two other people in the picture, which makes it a total of eight altogether. Eight. Well, there's in my family portrait. There's three male and three female. In the boat, there's three sons and three daughter, three wives. But then there's also two. There's the, the mom and dad, actual mom and dad of the three. So it's eight. It's a total eight. So there's eight people in that picture. What if, if it means anything but 
you know, when you say that and you're pointing at the camera, and you say, just wait for it. First it's my dog, then it's my mother, is what I'm hearing. And these things, yeah, they could all be just naturally caused. You know, Bowie, a mixed breed. Maybe it was an uncommon thing, but because he's a mixed breed, he had seizures at the end of his life. And it's a new, new, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe strokes, just different strokes happen to different people. My mom is 76. But it's ironic that Jacob was talking about he has the ability to cause people to be dumb just at the basically push of a button and then talking about Merlin, my dog. So yeah, I was going to vent about that regardless of who you are, Jacob. I don't care if you're Elon Musk and you are in charge of the entire planet. If you cross the line with something that I drew, then there you go. That's, that's what I'm going to draw that. You, you've crossed the line on that one. But you could just be saying something that you knew was true in the future and you have absolutely nothing to do with it, but you're acting like a villain. But you're really a really, you know, kind-hearted person. You're just playing your role. So I always got to keep that in mind because that's what will keep me from being angry. It's just realizing, all right, look, these are all actors, actresses. They're trying to get under my skin because that's the, the part of the script. But, they, but they're not really that way anymore but they were and at some point I, I don't know you know the difference of when did they convert because at some point they were not converted and I come in their direction I don't like what I'm hearing I speak my mind about it and then they get converted but that's more like a Mary Magdalene type and then you would have a someone acting like Mary Maybe it's the other cabal. And that Mary would be a, a male and then turn to female. Coming up trying to, to come trying to get Christ to like commit adultery. Even though he, he was already married to Mary. Mar married to Mary. Mary married. Wouldn't that represent the church? The woman with the twelve stars above her head? clothed with the Son of God which is, which is Christ and it has the moon under her feet the moon isn't that the mother of Christ because, or Joseph didn't, didn't Joseph say Father I had a dream and to his brothers I had a dream that all of the stars I think he said 11 stars I forget, 11 or 12, all the stars, the sun and the moon bowed down to me. And he said, are you trying to tell me that your brothers, myself and your mother are going to bow down to you? Because he, he told them, he said, stars, sun, and then moon. And then his father said, huh, your brothers, me, and your mother? So I wonder if that meant the sun, meaning like God, his father, his actual Jacob is was Jason, J, uh, Joseph's father, so if he, he was representing at the time, um, and then his mother, the two main government officials, and then maybe he was talking about that that they're going to bow down and worship, and his father's like, I think he rebuked them for it, but he held the matter because he knew it was true. Or you knew it was going to be true. I don't know. Maybe that was it. Was that a Lamborghini? I'm just seeming. So what good does it do accusing people of being part of an organization, a gang stalker, a leader, commander, making my life difficult? I don't need to do it anymore because I just want to make sure that you knew I wasn't afraid of you. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you, the God of the universe. And I finally find out later and I have to be, I have to repent 
from my sins. Well, then I'll do it at the time when God speaks directly to me. How's that? Because he knows that if I knew the truth about certain things, I wouldn't be tormented. And then I wouldn't be, my, my soul would be more at rest. But man, I can't stand it when people lie and and I know it. And I can just, oh well, whatever. I don't know how he is created that way. So I never really understood it. Yeah, it's not like I haven't lied in my life, but you know you're lying and it just does not feel good. But if you try to, if you sear your conscience with a hot iron, then and it doesn't fall on your toe when you're like two years old and burns it, being at bar toe, then you would repent from the, the lie or you wouldn't feel good about it.